Hey everybody, it's Professor Hanlon here at Fredonia. This is Johnny, one of our freshmen in the studio. Say hi, Johnny. Hi. <laughs> Great. Uh, Johnny's from Long Island, and we're excited he's here. Uh, Johnny's going to help me with this video. We're going to we're going to talk through a little bit constructing the French bow hold, uh, as well as uh, just you know sort of thinking a little bit about the arm and how how the arm should be interacting with with the bow as as we move across the base, etc. Okay, so. If you watch my left hand video or the German bow video, I can uh, just uh, say the same thing that I started those two with, which was th this summer I saw Paul Ellison, uh, who of course we know is a wonderful professor at Rice University, uh, give a class, a master class, and he was talking about the hands on the base in, in terms of, of course, the bow and, and also the left hand on the fingerboard. And uh, just the idea that your hands should look like your hands when you play the bass. I just think that's the coolest thing in the world. Uh, and, and so we're going to kind of continue to think about that here as we examine the French bow a little bit, okay? Uh, so <clears throat> one of the things that uh, is, I think, a good way to start with constructing the French bow grip is to actually take the bow away from the student. Makes a lot of sense, right? So Johnny, I'm going to steal this from you. And I'd like you to just take your hand and set it out like this in a natural shape. So we have the hand upside down here in a natural shape, okay? Again, right now, Johnny, that looks like your hand, and that's good. Okay, then what you can do is take the bow and just set it right into the student's hand like that. Okay, and then what you can ask them to do is then flip that over. And in certain ways, we're not far away from getting a good, a good bow grip going here. Okay, so I like to ask the student to spread out the fingers a little bit from there. And then I'm going to get close for this one. To, I su suggest that the thumb will meet the stick of the bow and the tip of the uh, frog sort of where they're both, where they connect, in fact. So the thumb will sort of go, and there's almost like a triangle between the stick, the frog, and, and the tip of your thumb, okay, all together. <clears throat> and so, Johnny, have you done that? Okay, good. So we'll check it out. Looks really good. It's also important to think a lot of times people jam the thumb out straight like that. And I think it's really important to think about the thumb being, again, if we think of the natural shape of the hand, there's a slight natural curve in the thumb. That should be the case as well. As we saw in the German bow a little bit as well, uh, there's a need for us to be flexible with the fingers and the thumb to be smooth and to make effective bow strokes, etc. Okay, so we got that going so far. Once you've sort of constructed that fingers slightly spread, and get the thumb in the right spot after starting upside down with the natural shape of the hand. At that point, I like to uh, actually do what I call um, what I call motorcycle bow or motor or handlebar bow. Okay, so Johnny, go ahead. We're going to do this together. Let's let's go up like this. And I like to always ask the, the students, Have you ever you know ridden a bicycle? Most of the time, that's a safe bet, particularly if you're teaching younger students. If you're teaching older students, sometimes dirt bike or motorcycle works. Whatever. Um, but And I actually asked them to hold the bow as if it were a set of handlebars, truly. So for now, just briefly forget the bow grip and, and go ahead and uh, see if you can... Yeah, that's great. Okay, and then I also invite them to just gently drop the bow onto the strings, but do let the weight land. So try that for us, Johnny. Yeah, that's great. And when you come down, and again, this is a good recommendation, uh, you, you got you to gotta be really careful I say it's a good recommendation for public school or K-12, I should say, as well. But you got to be careful because sometimes if you tell the students to drop the bow on the string, they'll be like, oh boy, a chance to break something, you know, and they'll just really hit it, which of course is not what we're looking for either. Uh, but I do think it's important to imagine the weight falling into the base. So let's try that one more time. Let's come up and go ahead and let it fall in a gentle but, but strong way. Yeah, good. And then we, we really sort of experience the weight of the arms coming down through the bow, which of course we need to make a good sound on the bass. So that's great. Now Johnny's got automatically so far a nice natural um, hang in the right arm. Can you show us what would happen if that eyeball was really tense and retracted? Yeah, so sometimes we have that problem, right? I bet we've all seen this before, yeah? And one of the things that you can do with that is to tell a student to go back to motorcycle bow, Let's do that, Johnny, if you would. And then you can actually grab the bow right here and pull against them. And that ensures that the arm is on the straighter side. Now, 
don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting to jam the arm out like that. I'm just suggesting that the arm be out and, 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 and hanging naturally, not jacked up, retracted this way, and not certainly jammed out straight either. So that can be helpful to just lightly pull against it. And then you can also invite the student to hang off the bow, you know. So go ahead and try that, Johnny. Yeah, that's good. I can feel the weight of your arms there. Sometimes the students are afraid to do that. And I always tell them, I know your arms weigh more than that, you know. And so there, yeah, there is. It's even more. So Johnny's getting into it now. All right, that's great. That's great. Um, okay. So <clears throat> now uh, it's important to go ahead and fall on here. And the one thing to continue to check, and this is related to the arm and the bow grip. So go ahead and let's go back uh, with the traditional appropriate French bow grip there, Johnny, go ahead when you're ready. You can also do this up here and fall onto the strings with the appropriate grip. I, I recommend that's really, really, really helpful. One thing to check, as you look at the right arm, sometimes, if, you, if I may, the wrist will be way up. I'm just I'm going to demonstrate. You're, you're doing this too well, Johnny. You're not being helpful. I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. uh, it can, you can get this thing, you know, where there's a really high wrist and the fingers are sort of straight up and down, and then it's, it, you don't have an uh, ability to transmit the weight the way that we need to. And the, the weight is sort of going down either side of the frog rather than onto the top of the stick, right? So you can check that by, you know, usually taking a bow is a good idea, and just making sure this generally, well, we can't see if I do it that way. There, that might be better. Generally a straight-ish line from the elbow down across the wrist the top of the hand, and actually the first part of the fingers. If you see the entire finger from the front, uh, if, if they hold the bow up and you see the entire finger, then that's going to actually be too much, uh, too straight of an approach. Whereas if you're, if you're looking at it and you can just see this part of the finger and that set of knuckles is across the top of the bow, that's going to work out a little bit better. Okay? Um, sometimes I like to say that you can, you know, it's a little bit out there in peace and love, but it's cool. I like to think about a water, like a waterfall coming down the arm and then gently going across the fingers, right? Whereas if you got this thing, you got, you know, we got Niagara Falls nearby here. We don't need any of that, you know, okay? So you can find my email on the uh, Fernandi website if you have any further questions. Thanks again to Johnny, and uh, I hope this is helpful to you. Take care.